Hey everybody and welcome to the future of photography. Uh, Adrian and Jeremiah with you today. How you doing buddy? I'm good. Uh, you know, still on the uh, extreme west coast of Canada. Is, uh, is there and, any more uh, west you can get? <laughs> I guess I could travel a little more. I'm on the east coast of the west coast of the island that is most west coast. So <laughs> theoretically get a little bit more west. Um, and there you go. The Pacific Northwest is where uh, I am. Yeah. And you, you'd been having some, some bad weather, I think, last time we spoke, as well as working really hard. How is, it, is, it, is it all going OK? Production running smoothly? Uh, yes. Uh, production is going s as smooth as one could imagine in, in times of and days off because someone comes down with it, but nothing, nothing that has impacted uh, significantly. Um, the work is consistently good, and uh, if I don't say so myself, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, we'll be done with the purple photography in another few weeks, and expected to be coming to your television world midsummer. Um, oh, I'm looking you forward know, to that. Have you, do, will that be available for me here in the UK to see? Absolutely, will yes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure uh, who, who's who's streaming. I, I will know in a month uh, which outlet uh, will be um, available for England. For for could be no. I th he, here in Canada it's Amazon. In the U.S. it's Hulu and NBC Universal, Sci-Fi. And the show will be available in Europe. Uh, we'll know on the outlets of specific countries. Uh, after what we call MIP, the, the uh, television market, so we're going out large with our foreign sales. But, uh, we, you know, we, we are pretty close to selling it worldwide, so we're very happy with it. And it's uh, extremely amusing. It's good. Cool. I'm looking cool. forward to seeing it, actually. Um, and just for the for the benefit of the listeners, um, you haven't been telling us all of the stories and, and the plot lines and the character stuff in the background. You, you, you've been very good about not giving all of that away. So. No spoilers. No spoilers. No, 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 it's going to no. be good. So I think that one of the reasons for asking that is it's really pertinent for our conversation today, which is about what we want to do in 2022. Right. So so the, we're, we're taking the future of photography a little bit personally today today and yeah. uh, understanding you know what are our aspirations all of the things we want to get out there into the big wide world in this year and of course you know th this show that you've been working on for several years at this point isn't it um it'll be yeah coming out. well you know the the first of all from the beginning of the pandemic uh, you know being locked in my studio for a couple of years uh, has really uh, provoked um uh, a huge for me personally outpouring of creative work on the photographic digital artwork and um and even uh my last show which was maybe two a week before i left for location here uh so that really reached the the kind of uh, top top of my kind of goals in terms of 21 and that that was done um and uh around the same time maybe a year a year ago summer coming uh, we were given the green light, so we had, you know, we were scrambling to get the production all up and organized, which we did, and and uh, that's taken away some of my photographic output. Though I have been taking pictures here, uh, throwing up a few things on Instagram just to, you know, keep well enough alive, and and that's been kind of fun. <laughs> but but um, uh, once I get back, uh, I will be into the kind of fine editing, mixing, uh, color correction, and all the things that I, I, I do really love, um, including getting more sleep. Um, and that <laughs> will give me a lot more time to get back um, on the creative horse in terms of, number one, outputting all of the images that I've made over the last five months, uh, organizing mm -hmm. that, editing that, um, you know, and working on those things. Uh, so, so there's that and new work, which, you know, we'll get into in, in a bit of what, what my goals are uh, for 22 and even into 23, both in terms of 
uh, output and, and showing or publishing uh, or, you know, creating. Um, but it's been, you know, for me personally, really, really a, you know, creatively busy, which I like, making things that didn't uh, exist yesterday, today. I like that. So, um, you know, I continue with my, you know, focus on staying in the flow and and um, and using it to balance all of the negativity that's going on in the world uh, in a way that, that keeps me sane, uh, but also connects me to the greater kind of population of the world and the empathy or sympathy that I, I feel, as we all do. Sounds, so. sounds, like, sounds good. So, yeah, plenty, plenty to come then for, from you this, this year. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll dip into a couple of bits maybe in a bit more detail in a minute. I think I'm, I'm kind of similar in, in some ways. I mean, as you know, I, I wasn't here for the show last week because I was actually out with a bunch of photo buddies. Um, you know, we had a, a, a meet up uh, in a city in the city of Coventry, uh, which, for those that don't know, it is is almost smack bang in the middle of England. Uh, and there was a group of, I think, twenty five to thirty of us met up. It was a, a really nice sunny day, and we spent the day wandering around the city. We had a couple of local guys who were guiding us around as well, and it was just really nice to get you know, back get back out there, see some people, you know, and not not you know yet. I think I'd done a, a one or two bits and bobs last year, um, you know, COVID allowing. Um, but, uh, yeah, but of course, it's been the winter here as well and it's been miserable weather. And so it was really nice to get out on a sunny day. It wasn't overly warm, but it was really nice out there to hang out with friends and to think about what we're doing this year like, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's... I think I, I've decided. I've decided I'm going to try. I'm going to talk about this on a podcast, so that hopefully it will give me the self discipline to see it through. Uh, but I've decided I'm going to try and focus a bit more on physical output for my photography this year. Uh, so one of the things I think I've I've spoken quite a, li- a lot recently on the podcast about using my little point and shoot Olympus camera and 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 taking some images uh, with that, and and I'm building up towards uh what actually probably will be my first ever zine like publication um i have a a rough cut of it uh, i need to swap some of the images out and swap some other images in and and do uh, you know a, a more finalized layout maybe there's maybe there's one more draft to print and see what it looks like before i then do the final draft and, and print a small volume maybe and mm-hmm. and yeah, give those to friends you know i i I think whether I want to sell any, maybe for charity. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't probably sell them for the money. But yeah, there's some. If I could sell some and raise some money for charity, that might be nice as well. So uh, that's that's definitely something I'm looking forward to because I think one of the things I want to do is is ex is is exercise more of the photographer the the world. No, no, I'm getting this wrong. The the whole sort of production cycle of photography you know for for a long time i've been you know somebody that takes photographs but i don't do a lot of post-processing i don't do a lot of pre-production to set things up unless i'm doing sort of portraits with proper lighting and stuff like that i don't really do a lot of pre-production i don't do a lot of conceptual work so I, i'm looking forward to doing something that's a bit more thought through with the aim of creating a body of work which i can see in some sort of physical presence and the first thing expression that, maybe, of that would be a you you could you could think about maybe making a um, a website for your photography that is just for your photography and and you you can also create uh, folios there that are password protected in the, in other words for friends and family that are kind of your more personal stuff but also stuff that is more um, kind of out in the world and um, you'd be surprised how much discipline it takes to actually make a consistent, like making a book or a zine or, or an article or a folio, um, the placement, the, the kind of uh, pagination, the editing, um, and also translating the look of it from your camera through the editing process to the final output. Obviously, it's very different if you're using a zine-like paper, more absorbent inks, that is more about an image rather than a fine quality proof. 
Uh, all the way up to different printing processes and that we've talked about. Uh, there are fine, fine art printers that you may want to experiment with getting some of your work printed and, 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 and do the editing with a printer just to see the difference between an image on your camera, an image on the screen, an image in your phone, an image on a zine-like format, and if fine art print. All of these transform the image in ways that one can only guess at until you hold it in your hand. And, and so I think that that's an interesting experiment in understanding the potential and the possibilities and also inspiring the kinds of work that you do. Um, so outputting work is something that I, I find, for me, I've, I've always been, because I'm sort of old school, you know, gallery oriented, began that way in, in my photography way back, that there's an attraction to the presentation there. With the advent of digital media, both social and and kind of market-wise, whether you're talking about these these big markets from foundation or super rare all the way to rareable or open sea that provide, and there's now dozens of them, um, that's a different audience for your work, just people who wouldn't pay attention to work that's coming out of, say, a fine art gallery, uh, or wouldn't know how to get your website. So you, there's also a way to connect all of that stuff and drive people uh, to your work. I'm, I'm currently building um, another website, which would be dedicated only to my digital work and then transforming my personal work only for my, what I would consider purely photographic work. And oh, so okay. they would, theoretically they and they would be linked obviously but they would have different different audiences i i would imagine uh different appreciations uh because the intention is different and so experimenting with output is something that i, I um i'm hoping to achieve in in the new year uh putting together um another website um and fine tuning the one that i have um maybe reducing the amount of work I have, but expanding the folios within it so that there are more spe there's more specificity on both the digital and the photographic, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, I have to say, actually, there's a couple of a couple of things in there that you just said that, re you know, that sparking some ideas for me. I mean, you, you know, uh, it's uh, one of the things was you know, j just the concept of having a website. I, it's not something I've ever bothered with. I'm not it's not that I'm particularly an introverted person, but the the, the primary audience for the, for the whole of my interest in photography the primary audience that's intended for is me right uh, yeah occasionally, occasionally for others but that and that's 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 something that is um it, it has possibly made it a safer zone to experiment but also possibly constrained it and so one of the things that one of the things i took away from this day on saturday last saturday um you know being out and about is that's just that sense of of freedom and you know and and being sociable and uh the thing that i came away with is that i really want more of that it really did me the power of good mentally and i came home and I, you know i even said to, to my kids you know, oh and my wife as well but primarily to the kids i said look i've had an amazing day uh, because I've been out and I've been out with other people so if you want to ever like invite your friends around or you want me to take you somewhere to go see them or whatever just just say so just invite them and you'll be very happy you know let, now we're allowed to do all of that stuff again without uh, extra complications at least for now in England we're allowed to do that stuff again um, I said you know yeah, let's make sure that we we do that and make you know, make those opportunities because I think you know it did me the power honestly it did, did me the power of good and so may, maybe um i i came away with that thinking i want this year to be in, to involve many more real world interactions um how do you how, can i ask you about that how, um was there a sense of nervousness that was accompanied by the sense of exuberation exuberance or whatever you know, did you feel liberated and yet 
Is this dangerous? No, I'm kind of past that now. So I'd been on the train. Um, at first I was nervous. Then, you know, I, I kind of stopped being nervous. Uh, then it, everybody in our house had, apart from me, apparently, um, had COVID a few weeks ago anyway. And so, you know, although I, I tested negative all the way through it uh, while the other the others had it. But um, maybe I had it. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I was I was super careful during that time. And so going out, you know, more recently, I'm like, well, you know, I've had three jabs and I've probably had a bit of COVID on the side as well. It's like, yeah, you know. you're probably that, that's kind of the way I feel. And, and, and it does influence obviously because we're talking about photography how you go out in the world how you you know just street photography that that yeah. w- would have been very uh, transformative during covid because a the streets were certainly um not as densely packed if at all uh, over the course of the year so yeah we were outdoors most people weren't wearing masks um, but that was okay that's fine now we're here um uh, and it was a lovely day so there were plenty of people around we were in a shopping center at part of the time so so the, where we were in coventry the city center is is quite small you can walk around it really easily but you've got everything from you know the ruins of a medieval cathedral and you have the cathedral right the 60, coventry. well you have two cathedrals next to which is you've got the the you've got the medieval one you've got the modern one um you've got a shopping center that is largely sort of 60s brutalist architecture you know uh, which is great um you, you've got all sorts of different things to see um uh so yeah and and all sorts of different people around as well so yeah that that was great and definitely some of those photos are going to get in make it into my zine that I, i'm doing but i did come away from it thinking you know feeling regenerated in some way right from being with other people having those uh, having those geeky photo photo conversations that you can have when you're meeting up with a bunch of like-minded people um and uh, yeah i i look forward to that as well is just um going to several uh, meetups uh, gallery openings uh, participating in the the art community um socially that i think is has been um you know diminished significantly you know with covid uh, a lot of outreach of course online and i think we're going to see not the elimination of the online communities and the the outreach, because certainly in my business, a lot of what we've discovered, I'm sure in yours too, that the connection between people when uh, needed could easily be handled by Zoom or Google Meets and all all of that kind of thing when you don't have to travel an hour, half an hour each way just to sit in the room and go, yeah, let's do that. Um, So there's that. And yet on the social side, um, it's very, very different because there, there's just a nice kind of energy exchange that I think is very inspired, especially when you're working on common things or going to a sporting event. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? That The sense mm-hmm. of being with people, uh, which is a natural um, human condition. So, um, you know, a, a lot of what I have planned for 22 and into 23, of course, besides finishing up this uh, series that I'm working on is is really getting out into the community with my work, uh, both in terms of post and in terms of the creative uh, process. And I, I, that, that really, uh, you know, we can't really put a, a stronger uh, need on that as humans to participate in that so that the isolation that we have kind of experienced um, is a driving force to new appreciation of community. Mm. And I think uh, we're, we're all going to feel that, I expect. Yeah, I have on my to-do list now, like, uh, you know, to, to set stuff up for those, exactly those sort of things, you know, getting out there. So I think, you know, one of the things I'm going to do is I, I'm going to set some dates for further meetups, maybe one every couple of months or something, mm. maybe different parts of the country so I can catch up with different folks. And, you know, and just say to people, I'm going to be here, right? You know, this day I'm going to be here wandering around with a camera, come and be sociable, have a chat, you know, and, and we'll make some photos and, you know, it, it'll be fun. So I'm definitely I, going to I, do some I, of that. A little bird told me that you've purchased or ordered a new camera. 
Oh, uh, well, that's uh, interested another parties w- are very, very interested in what camera you <laughs> have ordered. Well, okay. Um, so yes, I have. Um, uh, hopefully, I will get it in a in a few weeks' time. Uh, it needs to be made first, um, or, or um, actually, correction: it doesn't get made; it gets printed. Um, so uh, yeah, I have. Um, we, we we're talking again. This stems back to this one day out, and I got all over excited. Uh, one one of the people that was there on this day uh, is a friend of mine called Steve Lloyd, and Steve runs a, a company called Chroma Camera, uh, and uh, they he uh, they make uh, a, a range of different cameras, actually all all film cameras, and all with um, larger formats. So he started off. I think the very first one he made was. I forget whether it was a four by five or an eight by ten, but a, you know, proper a, a proper camera with all the movements and and things like that, um, and started making things like that. He now does some other ones that are um, you know things like um, snapshot four by five cameras. So uh, for those that struggle well, uh, to picture one of those, if you can imagine a sort of a pyramid shape where the flat rectangular base of the pyramid will be your film plane for the 4x5, but the whole thing is essentially a cone to, ma- to to channel the light, and you just put a lens on the end of it, and you've effectively got a, a point-and-shoot 4x5 camera. No ground glass to focus, it's all, you know, you have to focus with um, actually I think, in, uh, maybe not on the snapshot, but he does sell ones where you can put a ground glass in. Um, so and he had with him, um, I, I think, it, uh, possibly a prototype um, or at least a, a pre-production model of something. And it really caught my eye and I sort of picked it up and hefted it a bit. And I was like, yeah, I could I could do something with this. Definitely. <laughs> and so, And this is really interesting because this doesn't happen to me very often. I don't get excited by cameras very often. And you remember, of course, only a couple of years back, I sold off most of my camera collection. Uh, and so you know, uh, but this really did catch my eye so um, I have ordered uh, a chroma camera from Steve um, and I have ordered uh, a 6x12 medium format camera um, oh lovely like so, a poor man's Linhoff uh, do you know what very much but um, uh, and that's okay by me because I've, I've you know, felt this thing in my hand and it feels really good so uh, pic- picture, I mean, there's a link in the show notes, um, but, but picture, if you're listening, um, uh, a, 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 fair, a pretty small camera, to be honest, given, given that it shoots 6x12 uh, I- images. And, and for those that don't shoot film, this is 6 centimeters by 12 centimeters is the size of the negative. Um, so how many hundreds of times bigger than a full frame digital camera that is, I, I wouldn't like to guess, um, but, but pos- possibly several. Um, so uh, the um, yeah, so it, it looks and feels um, a little bit like maybe a uh, Hasselblad X Pan, um, you know, so, you know uh, something like that. So it, it, it's it's a handheld camera. It's not something you know. It's not a a, a big four by five or eight by ten where you have to have like a cloth over your head to focus it or anything like that. It doesn't actually have. Um, a, a ground glass in it so the only way to focus it will be to to guess the distance and set the focus on the lens which is fine it's all good yeah. um, and uh, it'll shoot off a roll of film if you're shooting six by twelves it'll shoot all i think maybe eight shots per per roll of of medium format film uh, it also shoots six by nine and six by six as well so you can uh, you can choose yeah you're, you're breaking my heart because what one of the one of my you know, favorite cameras that that I own is the Hasselblad X-Pan. And if anyone working for Hasselblad is listening, shame on you for not uh, being able to repair my camera. Oh, is your X-Pan broken, but is it? Oh. The shutter has jammed. Oh, dear. And uh, I've tried to get it repaired, and they say we cannot support the camera anymore because we cannot... We're not allowed to use the parts that we originally built the camera with. Is that because uh, they only make drones now, Hasselblad? <laughs> whatever it is, uh, you know, that camera, which is I've taken to Patagonia. I've taken it. I mean, it's, a, it's beautifully all, all, all of the, the, the black is worn off and the brass uh, shows through. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. it feels like a camera that was 
used. The lenses, of course, are spectacular. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the problem is I just wanted to have the shutter replaced and, and I can't do it. And they wouldn't. They basically turned a blind eye to someone who is. There, is there no independent person who can do that for you? Both. I, I went all over because they have to get the parts from Hasselblad at the end of the day. Anyways. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's a shame on you, Hasselblad. Um, you know, I, I use Leica's too. And when Leica had a corrosion problem, they made good on just about every possibility to keep me in that Leica family. And yet, Hasselblad. Did not. Hasselblad are a, a very different animal, though, aren't they? I mean, they've they've changed hands several times uh, over the last few years. Uh, the, my, my reference to them being a drone manufacturer is I think they're currently owned by DJI, the the drone manufacturer. Uh, so you know they're they they're not they haven't got the benefit of Leica of of having stayed you know, with, with autonomy and independence and and be able to follow through on these things. Um, I, that's a real, that's a real shame. So, well, this is this is definitely not an X pan. I mean, an X pan, uh, uh, as you well know, uh, shoots thirty five mil, and it roughly, I think, shoots uh, equivalent to three frames of thirty five. Yeah, mil a little one less image, than... doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful um, landscape camera to throw in your bag again. Yeah. Yes. High quality. Well, this really will this will be this will be one that is is equally is relatively small and and fits in about it'll, it'll probably I mean it'll be a bit taller than an X pan of course because it's shooting film that's you know yeah. uh, that's sixty mil tall rather than thirty five mil tall or thirty six mil tall. Um, so it's uh, there is so so there's there's a few um, there's a few differences but uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun um, and it, you have to order the lenses separately so the the camera is made the the lens I've ordered is uh, uh, look I haven't seen it yet I, I know I know it's a good lens because it arrived with Steve who's making the camera today and so what I've bought is is a called a, a Schneider 65 mil f8 super angulon yes and and both of uh, your colleagues myself and Chris we both own those yeah i didn't know that until after i bought it but you yeah it's um uh you you guys put that in our discord chat and i was like oh wow okay so um so you can vouch hopefully that it's a decent lens i, I vouch for it's a wonderful lens really wonderful uh especially for those kinds of formats beautifully yeah so technically yeah. it's a it's a large format lens um for, yeah. for, for shooting four by five because the the 12 centimeter uh width of the image that this new camera will will produce uh is is effectively the width of a four by five right it's, it's, so you'll you'll be using the center of the lens it's really pretty great yeah so very very happy with it and excited and this goes back to you know what are we doing in 2022 so i'm trying you know i'm i'm inspired right i saw something that inspired me in this case it was a camera which as I say, unusual for me. And I've been thinking about, well, what's the work I want to do with it? What, you know, because I've been doing all this scratchy, you know, low res digital stuff recently, which is great. Uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoy that. And that's all good. Um, uh, but it didn't seem to me right, really, to, to take a uh, a six by 12 <laughs> camera and just do <laughs> scratchy digital work with it. <laughs> that's so I'm thinking um, I, the, another thing that I've ever done and never, never done, I should say, is is that sort of fine art style printing, maybe you know, on, a, on a rag paper kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm thinking is um, is to, to make a again, create without without pressure to deadlines, but over time, create a body of work where shoot, shooting with this camera um which would be which i would use to to learn a little bit more about different types of printing um and and you know how that might be to to print single images yes a body of work but you know single images printed um and learn a bit more about printing and then of course then are you getting a new are, are, are you going to buy a a um uh, you could buy a small printer and experiment with inks uh which is fun i could do uh, i'm I'm at the thinking stage, so all ideas will be gratefully received. I have a small Epson printer. It's a photo printer. It says um, it has eight cartridges in it, um, and uh, so so I might do a few trial runs with that. Um, uh, it, I don't think it's a 
proper pro- professional style one it's more of a consumer grade photo printer so uh, it'd be good for, for trying some stuff out but one of the things yeah, you know, going back to the you know social aspect of it and being inspired by stuff one of the things i'm thinking is to ha- is to work with other people to deliberately work with other people um, so maybe I would, del- you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, OK, um, I'm deliberately working with a camera builder at the moment. Um, I, uh, I'm going to have a chat with the my, my lab guy. Um, uh, I say that that sounds terrible, doesn't it? He's not my lab guy. He's a guy who's really good. He runs his own lab here in the UK uh, and is really good. But he's also really good at working with photographers to try and create a look for them in the development and in the scanning. If you're going to go the sort of you know, a hybrid route and do the digital uh, scanning as well, so I'm going to do that. And and I think maybe and um, you know maybe find somebody I can work with or, or a service I could work with on printing and try some new things out. So. Um, some of it maybe I'll do at home but really I want to be out there and working with other people so yeah that's kind of where my head's at anyway yeah uh, I, you know I feel um, in, in some ways uh, in terms of printing um, you know as you know I'm, I'm kind of deep into piezography and uh, yeah, oh yes I want to further my exploration of gravure printing of digital photographs so start you know, with uh, digital imagery and and kind of move the digital image into basically a 16th century printing process um, of plates and etchings and using ink that are not only fast but but and by fast I mean long lasting. Um, yes, yes, stick fast. Layered, yes. La- layered and, and beautifully velvet. I've done. One experiment uh, with uh, John Cohn, who basically invented the piezography uh, process, and they they have a um, you know their their facility, which is in the middle of Vermont, in a very idyllic uh, area, and they offer all manner of of um, workshops there for for week, a week at a time, both in piezography and in all manner of, of really um, pushing the limits of, of photographic printing, including gravure, um, and have wanted to do that for several years, obviously pre-pandemic. Um, and so that is that is definitely on my target list um, in terms of you know my studies, as it were. Uh, I want to get uh, certainly more versed in Unreal Engine five which I have not had the opportunity of working with in terms of construct. Um, I probably will need a new computer, a faster computer to work <laughs> with that, <laughs> sadly. Um, so what, I, what, I, what, what, would you, what kind of computer do you need to work with that? I mean, are you talking about, yeah, are you talking about uh, either a Windows or a, a, a Mac desktop yeah, computer I'm hoping, that you spec I'm, out, or do you need something super special? No, well, nowadays, well, I need to spec it out because the the rendering processes uh, that kind of output from these um, these software apps are are you know they, they they use every bit of engine in your computer. I mean, it, it puts it to the test. So not only in terms of of managing the creative process, which you can do in a way a little bit more low res. But once you put it all together and output your file, uh, you need something that will really crunch it or else every step of the process is a slow one and it becomes uh, frustrating. So, And, and a constraint faster, to your creativity at some point, isn't it? Because I feel is, it does because, yeah. you, you know, the way I work, I, certainly in terms of, like imagine if you were using a photo editing tool where every every step that you did, you had to stop for a minute or 30 yes. seconds or two minutes to let it render, which used to be the case, by the way. It, it did. And in fact, it, especially as well, of course, with um, with video as well. Um, so, yeah. you know, a, a couple a couple of years back, um, you know, my last my last MacBook, um, you know, working with 1080p video, it would need to render transitions. And so you're, you're constantly being yeah. stopped in, in, in your flow. 
Um, it's yeah. one of the reasons I ended up buying an iPad and started doing video editing on the iPad because the iPad did it all seamlessly. I was like, hang on, I've got this like handheld device here that is just absolutely screaming through this video, uh, and yet my main laptop just can't can't do it. And of course, there's there's lots of yeah. We I guess we all have some idea of the variation between you know hardware and and software you know, integration and stuff like that. So we 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 know how these things can be optimized. Um, it was really nice. I can't remember. I think it was early last year when I got a new laptop and suddenly I could do that sort of thing on my laptop as well. Yeah. But it, so tools, to, you know, tools and the application of those tools specific to an outcome is something that I have on the horizon, cool. um, furthering my, my printing output and experimenting with different mediums. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I have done a show of big glass um, imagery. Uh, I did a show of lenticulars. And I plan to do another show of lenticulars that are coupled with animated uh, NFTs that are could join. So if you buy an NFT, you get a lenticular print. If you buy a lenticular print, you'll get an NFT. And okay. this way you can enjoy the work digitally or in real life, IRL. And, and, and that's something that, that I have in mind um, for, the, for the next season. So... I look you're forward to busy. that. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the one thing that's interesting when you're working alone in the studio, um, and I have no problems doing that because the days passed, I'm very, very, uh, I was surprised at how, um, you know, how lovely my isolation was really in terms of creativity, maybe not so much socially, but I did have a, a, a good social life online here uh, <laughs> with Nick and all the rest. But once uh, the green light came for our show, it was really, despite the, the difficulty of working during COVID, et cetera, uh, and, you know, we got the green light just before Omicron. So it was, you know, it was dipping. And then we started production and Omicron hit. And so that became a little more frantic. But yeah. working, you know, as I do in a way with, you know, a couple of hundred people a day managing that kind of, uh, it was it was lovely just to have that kind of social collaborative experience because filmmaking is collaborative. I mean, yes, I'm the EP, I'm the director uh, of, of, of record. Um, my partner is the writer of record and it's our company. But but the the you know, the the fact is and, you know, you hear this all, all the time, but it's very, very true. All I do is provide the pathway and the, the direction for everyone to do their best work. And then I get to take credit for it, which is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> any good ideas become mine and any bad ideas. Well, I, uh, <laughs> um, and I'm sure, yet, you, I'm you sure know, your producer will have a word to say about that. <laughs> thing is I'm the producer too. So <laughs> we agree. The, I think the key really is now that I've kind of been in full force in this world, uh, moving in and out of, of this social medium of filmmaking, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to a little quiet time of just pulling it all together and, and working uh, on my own. So it's it's a back and forth of it that that I embrace both worlds. I like that. Yes. Yeah, definitely with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. The, the back and forth is is something I'm really looking forward to. And because and it, it's been so much back and not enough forth for the last two exactly. years isn't it? yeah so. yeah yeah and you know frustrated that i wasn't able to go to the super bowl which happened in my absence i'm a big football fan and and our team won so how good is that <laughs> so but uh you know formula one is starting up again so that's my other sport that i like and you know um i would certainly like the opportunity to try and figure out how to shoot a grand prix in a in a more uh, artistic way. That, it, that's yeah, that's, well, that's the goal that I have. Yes. Okay. So, uh, well, we talked when we talked about the Olympics the other week, didn't we? We talked about David yeah. Burnett and the way that he shoots sports and stuff like that, um, which I always yeah. find absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, the, the, to do something like that with Formula One is um, it, yeah would 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 be good. That would be really interesting. Yeah. So I, I have to figure out how to how to uh, get myself into a you know one of one of the car uh one of the companies one of the seats and and uh and figure out how to do that 
you know, sort of soup to nuts, you know. Mm, yeah. It, it would be a really, really lovely project for me. No, oh, I'm yeah. sure it would. Oh. I think it'd be a, a project that many photographers would aspire to. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> cool okay well i tell you what we are going to be busy for 2022 then aren't we um so we but but in a in a good way and i think you know I, i'm really looking forward to it I, i'm going to be you know really starting to you know, uh, start some things moving start some balls rolling as they say over the next few weeks so that you know we can build some momentum this year um it, i think this year it's, it's going to be good to to be back out there and doing stuff shall, shall we go to our picks of the week sure let's do that um, okay uh well I, I'll, I'll go first because i've already talked sure. about mine uh, a little bit um so uh my pick of the week um is indeed uh the chroma camera 612 um so uh link in the show notes as i said um uh you know, it, and it's great do you know what the, the wonderful thing about this is um you know knowing the guy who runs the company you know and chatting with him you know and and talking things through. and he's super helpful and he's he's a fantastic engineer and he does all of these designs himself and and things like that so uh, and he has the printers himself and you know, and stuff and he, it's it's really nice to be able to work with somebody who who knows their stuff in this way he really knows the photography side of it and, and you know and the maths and the science of the photography and he really knows how to turn that into solid engineering um so um i'm really looking forward to this um uh yeah i i'm definitely looking forward to this um they don't just sell six by uh twelves by the way uh, i'll mention one other camera that they sell which is a fantastic little thing it's called the cube and it is a 35 millimeter film pinhole camera and it shoots square images that are 24 by 24 millimeters um and uh, so you can get like 50 shots on a roll of film or something like that it's it's, it's something crazy and ridiculous that's great because you're not going for the eight by ten look <laughs> right? no no you're not going no this is no it's almost more like your 110 film look isn't it it's probably, i guess it's a bit bigger fine. than 110 but. that sounds like uh something i need <laughs> yeah no you might do um because he's he's and and because it's his comment because he's an engineer he's continually developing these things so he's developing i think at the moment a set of magnetic filters for it um mm. you know and stuff like that and it, it just it literally fits in the palm of your hand and and you you uh, and it it. make these lovely little square images in a pinhole camera so um i think he's even got um for those of you that might be worried about not being able to to wind on a 35 mil film because it's got no backing paper with numbers on it i think there's even like a number he's put built in a clicky device so you can tell it's like <laughs> so many clicks to wind it on one frame and stuff like that fantastic good oh, yeah. i should I'm, I'm going to immediately check it out after we're done you know my my, my pick and this is it's kind of funny we both are doing kind of real world stuff uh I've selected something called an art pack at links in the notes as well. And it's really, if you ever need to pack up a framed picture and send it or carry it or move it, Ooh. it becomes, you, you, you know, it's not something that you can easily go, Oh, just put it in a cardboard box. Yeah. Wrap it up. This is, these are packages or packs designed for multiple uses to send framed artwork. And uh, just a, a lovely, very specific um, piece of kit that um, I, I encourage those who are kind of moving art or framed imagery around the world or locally to check it out because it, 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 it makes it a lot easier to do so. Yeah, that's the, I, the, I've never seen anything like that before. That's, that's really, that's really um, interesting. There's a few. It looks like they've got a few suppliers that are not too far away from me as well. There's a few in London, yeah. so go and have a look. That's at my email. my pick. Excellent. Yeah, that's a that's a great pick. That is, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, so they're not just available in London, by the way. They are available globally. I should <laughs> yeah. say that before anybody gets it. Yeah, they thinks that they're not. But they're, uh, so uh, yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. Like that a lot. Excellent. Good picks. Well, um, well, there we go, folks. Um, a look at 2022. Uh, get in touch and tell us what you're going to do uh, in 2022 um, because we'll always be interested to hear from it. Uh, we have our Discord, of course, where there's always good chat. Uh, we are uh, the future of photography on... Uh, actually, we're not. We're at TFOP now, I should say, on Twitter and some other socials. So get in touch uh, and let us know. It'd be interesting to hear what your projects are. 
Uh, and on that note, um, we'll be back with you next week. Take care and goodbye. Cheerio.